so you guys are done using the Model B and you want to start using the Model B Plus, let's do it. Okay, let me show you what I actually backed up. So I did a screenshot of my home, you know, Pi uh, directory. There's a lot going on in here. Uh, a lot of people do backups differently uh, or migrations differently. Uh, the instructions for going Jesse to stretch is just crazy. It, it seems to never work. Um, but you'll see directories in here like scripts, uh, dot attract. You know, that's if you have a track mode, you're going to have the attract and scripts, especially if you have motion blue six. Um, there's going to be a lot of directories in here. Um, if you just migrate your ROMs only, you're not going to get all of your, uh, for instance, scripts. Um, you're not going to get all of your snapshots, you know, your videos, your marquees, you know, things like that. So that's the reason I'm doing this. Okay. So anyway, I did a backup of HomePy, uh, my data track folder, uh, my HomePy RetroPy folder, and OptoRetroPy. Okay. So each one of these is uh, specific to, you know, different reasons, but, you know, there's just a lot of customization that I did. Um, if you don't have much customization, you might be able to get away with just, you know, bringing over the ROMs. One last thing, guys, make sure you bring over the ETC emulation station folder. Otherwise, you may not see any custom systems that you've created. Okay. Okay, first thing you want to do is get Etcher. Pretty fly program. I mean, this thing is pretty fast. It's free. It's really nice looking, well put together, and Belena did a really good job. Anyway, just type in Etcher into Google, hit the first link, get it downloaded, and get it installed. It's probably the best SD card, imager, and flasher all in one that I've ever come across. So let's get it done. So when migrating to Stretch from Jesse, you have to go to RetroPie and get the latest, you know, 4.4 upgrade. So you can do that by going to the download site and just read through the installation instructions and depending on which one you have, you know, you'll know which one to download. If you're looking to save yourself a lot of work, and what I would recommend doing is actually going to get David Marty's Motion Blue 6. It's hosted on ArcadePunks.com, a very cool site definitely donate you know support if you can uh, there's a lot of features you know this is where you get your dot attract uh, directory and all your scripts uh, there's an info page that comes with it tons of info you can read through this on your own so this will save you a lot of work so I recommend go ahead and doing this so let's go ahead and download it and then we're going to use etcher to go ahead and flash our memory cards so that we can get a pretty good base image that has both emulation station and a track mode uh, on top of the RetroPie 4.4 um, on stretch, all you know, pretty much preloaded. All we gotta do is load up our configs and all of our backup folders. So go ahead and download this, and then uh, we'll go from there. Once you get it downloaded, you're gonna have five RAR files, and a lot of people struggle with how to make an ISO from a RAR file. So I'm gonna show you how to do this in one click. So basically, you take the first one, right click on it, and extract it to that folder right there and it'll create this folder that you see up top okay and inside that folder will be your image file okay that's all you need to do it's that simple so now we got flash that SD cards go ahead and start up Milena at your navigate to your uh, image drive and you click on click on select image open it up and then it'll ask you what drive go ahead and select the drive just make sure you pick your SD card if you screw up and put it on you know some other drive you know just be careful and okay, make sure you're clicking on the right drive click on flash it'll say do you want to continue and you just say yes and off it goes and it'll take a little bit while anyway when it's done go ahead and inject it out and we're gonna pop it into the Raspberry Pi B plus and uh, start migrating our old stuff over let's do it alright so this is where we separate the men from the boys if you want to stop right here and just go ahead and go into your Explorer and do slash slash RetroPie and use the Samba shares and start bringing up your ROMs and go for it. I don't want to have to rescrape, do all my bezels, do all my... I didn't want none of my work to be in vain, so I wanted to migrate over everything. So if you want to just do that and game on, go for it. Nothing wrong with that. More power to you. If you want to continue to watch a video and see how I got everything over, 
I did hit some bumps in the road. Uh, it is a little tedious, a little advanced. Uh, maybe there's a better way, but at least I have everything on video and documented exactly how I did it. So let's do it. All right, I got my B Plus all hooked up with an Ethernet cable, keyboard, and a controller of your choice, HDMI, and power. Let's get these files up there and uh, let's get it all migrated. It's going to be fun. All right, so there's plenty of programs you can use to connect up to your Raspberry Pi. I choose WinSCP. You can choose whatever you want. So you need to be able to log in with your username and password and the IP. So if you boot it up, you'll get the IP under Show IP on the RetroPie uh, uh, config scripts. So go ahead and put in the IP uh, and your username and password and then log in. And what this will do is it'll give you a Windows Explorer kind of view so that you can drag and drop your files from the left side to the right side. So the left side will have uh, whatever files and folders you know, you're at. If you're on your desktop, it'll show you that or you know, wherever you've navigated. And on the right, the same thing. It'll show you all the files and folders for you know, wherever you're at. If you're on Home Pi or if you're on uh, Opt Retro Pi or wherever it's at. So it's just a drag and drop GUI that allows you to move files and folders similar to the Samba Share but this gives you full access to every folder on the system Okay, so I went through and started moving these folders one at a time and basically I just went from top to bottom and just dragged them over <coughs> into the proper folders so I'm not going to go into details about every single folder and you know every single file but you know this is the uh, the HomePie Attract Emulators you know, folder has all the configs for you know each of the systems. So everything from Amstrad to you know Sega Genesis down to the you know, ZM machine. So <coughs> sorry, I'm getting over a cold. Anyway, um, so you can kind of peruse through here, but you know, for example, the artwork that I set up, you know, I had them specified to go to Home RetroPie, ROMs, MAME, Advanced uh, Media, you know, things like that uh, for my setup. But if you go and look at the setup on, um, you know, the Motion Blue 6, uh, they're defaulted to something else. So, my best advice for this is to be very careful. So I went through the data track folder, uh, I went through layouts, and I noticed that it was missing uh, Unified Snazzy, which I like, and I had in my old one. You know, so I added it to layout. So I was just kind of perusing through, you know, specifically I was going very slow, you know, very tedious. And, you know, it's up to you what you want to bring over and what you don't want to bring over. Um, so just be aware that it's, um, it's a slow process. You know, some of these files are pretty big. Okay, so one of the other things you definitely want to bring over, um, you know, your intros and layouts, you know, you may or may not have those. Um, Main configs, uh, menu art, modules, plugins, ROM lists, definitely you want to bring those over because everybody has different ROMs and when you do your scraping, uh, especially in a track mode or emulation station that uh, the ROM lists are you know, tied into the uh, games and if it's not on there you're not going to see it. So definitely want to bring those over. Uh, very small files, those shouldn't take very long to bring over. Okay, next on the list is uh, scrape, uh, Scraper, Screensaver, Sounds, and Statistics. Um, scraper and Screensaver are probably the only ones that anyone ever messes around with. Sounds, you know, if you click on something, did you change the WAV file, you know, to like a Jedi Saber sound or something like that, you know. Um, but for the most part, these are not touched. So we're just going to do uh, Scraper for now, and that's going to have all your snap files. That's actually going to take a while. Okay, I wanted to also keep my stats, which is how many times you've played a game. So, you know, drag and drop. Okay, next we're going to go to Opt RetroPie. So, wherever your backup is, you know, go there. And on the right side, you're going to navigate to Opt RetroPie. And it's got some, you know, pretty important folders in there. Configs is the first one we're going to do. So, every time you change your button, for example, in MAME Advance, it goes in here. Otherwise, you got to redo all of that. So, you know definitely want to bring all these over it took me a lot of time you know also you know if you have specific sounds or samples or uh, things like that uh, save states you know artwork for like bezels for MAME um, you know you gotta bring that over too so 
go ahead and drag and drop that over. Opt Retro Pie Configs. And this one may also take a little bit of time. Okay, let me make this pretty clear. Opt Retro Pie Emulators. I don't care. Don't do it. Don't do it. Opt Retro Pie Emulators. Don't do it. I did it and oh my gosh. Don't do it. Because <laughs> if you do, I'm going to send Mega Man over there to kick your butt. Because <laughs> I warned you. Anyway, let's keep going. Last section home pie retro pie folder so go ahead and navigate to it on the right let's go under home pie and then go down to retro pie this is the big one and after going through these uh, I found out you only had to bring over six of the folders AMR ROM lists BIOS ES game lists retro pie menu ROMs and splash screens under retro pie other than that I didn't need it because there was no change Okay, so final thing, you gotta change some permissions on some of the directories. I noticed when I uploaded them, I had some issues, so uh, I had to go back and do this, so I wanted to make sure you guys saw it. So you have to change the ownership recursively through uh, home pi <coughs> um, to make it pi pi, so it's owned by pi user and pi group and opt retro pi uh, so that you know it'll work right. And also the third one you gotta do is Etsy emulation station. Okay, once you run those three, uh, that's pretty much it. Reboot should be good to go. Man, we are done. Yes, the light at the end of the tunnel. Anyway, uh, this has been a lot of fun, guys. Thanks for your patience. Uh, as you can see, this is my image here. Um, a couple things that I had to do that I didn't really mention. Uh, the Sega Genesis, for example, it was Mega Drive. I had to switch that right there. Um, what else? I had to remove uh, the default MP4 splash screens uh, from HomePie, RetroPie splash screens. Um, uh, what else? Uh, oh, I had to update my retro scripts and themes. I had to update those. Uh, other than that, it went really smooth. So, anyway, have some fun, guys. Enjoy. Keep on gaming. Uh, hopefully, I caught everything in this video. At least, maybe what not to do. You know, if you have a better way to do it, share. Uh, like and subscribe uh, let me know comment below and uh, just keep gaming till next time see ya